um, for that. Uh, pure love, pure water. All right, be sure and get you a bulletin and everything that goes along with it. All right, um, also don't forget about Faith Promise Missions. Um, had that service this morning. Want to remind you, you can any, at any time you can turn in your pledge and um, that's available to you. Um, there should be some cards left in the, um, the envelope slot there in front of you in the pew. So please, uh, if you haven't done that already, get that turned in. And um, we we'll appreciate all your cooperation and participation. Amen. Um, uh, supporting these missionaries and supporting missions across the world. All right. Um, anything else I need to announce? Any other announcements? All right. No other announcements. We do have a few prayer requests I want to make mention of. First off, um, please pray for um, Miss Wanda Altman. Um, Brother Romel visited us a while back, and his mother had cancer. They went in to take that cancer and found more. So please pray for Brother Romel's mother, um, Wanda. Um, also, please remember all those on our prayer list. we got Ann and Jean Gardner. Uh, we heard from Brother Jason and Miss Becky. They went off um, this, uh, this afternoon. Just them two, just a time to go off and relax and escape. So please pray for them as they travel. Also pray for Miss Becky. Uh, Julia and Jerry Bledsoe, good to see them this morning. Uh, Miss Nettie Searcy, Zachary Love, Linda Rabin, Vanessa Burst, continue to pray for her. You know, she's been battling with the surgery with her back and um, trying to get her blood sugar and everything regulated. So please continue to pray for her. Glenn and Nell Ollis, uh, continue to pray for Miss Jenny. Uh, let's see, Chelsea Hall, uh, Randy Morgan, Harry Holland. Um, I haven't heard an update on Brother Harry. Um, I did talk to him uh, this past week, so uh, continue to please pray for Brother Harry. Um, he had some health issues as well as he's got that big eye surgery. Um, he's having a cornea replacement, so please pray uh, for Brother Harry. Um, also continue to pray for Miss Christine and then also Miss Kay Tipton. Um, also, uh, Miss Marie Reed, um, I was told this afternoon um, by one of her friends that she um, had a daughter to pass away, 32 years old. So please pray um, for all of that family as well, Miss Marie's family. She's usually watching online every service, has some health issues, can't be here. So please pray for her, uh, her family. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, any other outspoken objects of prayer tonight we need to make mention of? Yes, yes, Miss Brenda. Miss Heather, did you get to talk to Miss Brenda? She had the flu, right? She did have the flu one time. I don't know what else. She, so please continue to pray for Miss Brenda Smith and Brother Darrell. Uh, we miss them, so please pray for them. Yeah. Yes. Okay, all right. Yes. Yes. Touch and go. Okay. All right. So please remember, uh, Sissy, that's Miss Sue Moffitt's daughter, and also these others that had a motorcycle or a, a vehicle accident. Sorry. I hear accident, motorcycle. I just automatically go to that. Miss Susan, you had one. Oh, my goodness. All right. So please remember Brother Mike Zulo and. Um, okay. Okay. So please remember both of them. Yes, sir. Yes, 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 amen. Yes, please remember all of those, all of our police, all of our um, EMS, uh, firefighters, uh, 911, remember all of them. Um, yeah, we're living in a, we're living, we're living in a day where it's, it's getting more and more prevalent and anywhere you go, it's getting worse. So please, please, uh, please pray for all these that are right on the front lines. Amen. Always remember those in our church that are on the front lines, Miss Brandy and Robert and Ethan and Brother Greg. Um, if I'm forgetting someone, I'm sorry. I think I hit all the... So do I? Dewey, the four or five. Dewey, Dewey. I'm sorry, Dewey. I, I'm still getting used to that. I'm sorry. Dewey. Um, so please remember, remember all these that are uh, serving in that capacity as well. All right. Any others? Was there one behind me? Okay. 
Amen. Um, I wasn't going to say anything, but I'm not going to let Satan win. Amen. Um, last Wednesday, I was just having one of those days where, like, it's just all getting to me. And, yeah. Because, I mean, who, who wants to go through this at 20 years old? It's yeah. hard for anyone. And um, I was sitting in the parking lot of the chiropractor, and I was just crying my eyes out for the Lord, telling him how much longer I can take it. Yeah. Amen. I meant to mention them this morning. Miss Brenda texted me yesterday. Um, Holton now has what she had. So please pray for both of them uh, that God would touch them. They said they'd be watching online. So uh, please pray for both Brenda and Holton. Thank you, Miss Ju- Judy. Thank you. Uh, any others? Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, uh, if you have any unspoken tonight, let it be known by uplifting hands, something on your heart. All right. Pray for the service tonight. Pray God be glorified in everything said and done. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, thank you, Lord, for this time again today. Lord, uh, we're allowed to gather together, Lord, on this Sunday evening. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to our hearts this morning. Thank you, Lord, for good liberty. God, thank you, Lord, for moving in our midst, Lord, from Sunday school, Lord, all the way through service. Lord, we just ask God for your blessing tonight. God, we pray that you would speak to our heart, Lord, and help us, Lord, to be about your business. Dear God, and I pray that you would bind every hindrance, Lord, and I pray that Christ would be high and lifted up. Please, Lord, be with each and every object. Lord, there's many in our church that are hurting. Lord, there's many, dear Lord, who are sick. Lord, we pray for Brenda and Daryl. Lord, we pray for Holton and uh, Brenda. Father, we pray that you'd be with all those that are sick and afflicted. Lord, those that are still recovering, those that are traveling. God, those first responders, Lord, those that are serving our community, dear Lord, every single day. Father, we pray for your protection upon them. God, and I pray, Lord, that you'd help each and every one of us. Lord, as we live in this world, dear God, you said in this world, we, you, we shall have tribulation. But you told us to be of good cheer because you have overcome the world. God, you are our anchor. You are our hope. God, and we please ask, we ask you to help us tonight keep our eyes on you. Lord, we pray for blessing. Lord, bless the choir as they sing. Lord, and I pray, God, that you continue to bless our church. God, we thank you for how good you've been to us. Lord, we don't deserve anything. God, but we thank you, Lord, for uh, blessing us, Lord, and helping us. Lord, and I pray, God, that you continue to bless us and help us to stay on the right path. Lord, and we'll give you praise, honor, and glory for all you do. In Jesus' name we pray, and for his sake, amen and amen. All right. The choir's going to sing for us tonight. So you pray for the choir, and then uh, we'll have some special music and some preaching. Amen. Y'all ready? I'm not convinced. Get ready. Amen. You ready? Amen. All right. Go for it.
thank God he's always with us during the storms. Amen. <laughs> it's been a blessing to me. <coughs> Shake hands while they're coming. Amen. Glad I'm standing on the rock tonight. Amen. I shall not be moved. We sing that when we was little. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Amen. All right, we're going to have some special music now. Miss Megan and Miss Debbie's going to come sing for us. So you pray for them as they come. And then uh, after that, we'll preach a little bit. All right, so you pray for them. Come on, ladies. What would I do without Jesus, the shepherd of my valley? Lord, I just couldn't walk this road alone. When I'm hungry, he feeds me. When I'm thirsty, he feeds my water. I couldn't make it. Talk to, he 
shepherd of my valley. I couldn't make it without Jesus. What would I do? so much. What a blessing. What a blessed truth both those songs hold. Amen. Amen. I'm glad we're never alone. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Take your Bible tonight and turn with me to 2 Samuel chapter 24. 2 Samuel chapter number 24. And I will also, uh, as you hold your place there, I will also be in 1 Chronicles 
2 <clears throat> Samuel 24 and 1 Chronicles. Read just a few verses in 1 Chronicles tonight. <clears throat> Go ahead and get both of mine turned out that, that direction. <clears throat> First Chronicles chapter 21 is where we'll be in First Chronicles, so I'll let you go ahead and find your place there. We'll be toward the end of the chapter there, so that will hopefully help you get where you need to be. <clears throat> uh, this is the message that I had on my heart this, for this morning. The Lord has held us off till tonight and um, has... Uh, both of these have an application to missions and to um, supporting missionaries and to uh, obe being obedient to God. You know, as Christians, our goal is not to uh, be seen, it is not to be heard, uh, our opinions or what we think, but our goal as Christians is to be obedient to God, plain and simple. And it sounds so easy, but yet for us it is so hard. It is so hard for us to be obedient. And we see that tonight in uh, the life of David as God is going to uh, give us here uh, some hopefully and prayerfully some instruction as how we are to be more obedient to Him. And um, God help us tonight. Uh, verse Chapter 24 of 2 Samuel, beginning in verse 19, the Bible says, And David, according to the saying of Gad, went up as the Lord commanded, and Arona looked and saw the king and his servants coming on toward him. And Arona went out and bowed himself before the king on his face upon the ground. And Arona said, Wherefore is my lord the king come to his servant? David said, To buy the threshing floor of thee, to build an altar unto the Lord, that the plague may be stayed from the people. And Aronal said unto David, let my lord the king take and offer up what seemeth good unto him. Behold, here be oxen for burnt sacrifice and threshing instruments and other instruments of the oxen for wood. All these things did Aaron all as a king give unto the king. And Aaron all said unto the king, The Lord thy God accept thee. The king said unto Aaron all, Nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which doth cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for fifty shekels of silver. David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated for the land and the plague was stayed from Israel. Now if you'll turn with me over to Second Chronicles. I'm sorry, First Chronicles. <laughs> About had you through for a looper, didn't I? First Chronicles chapter number 21, verse 23. The Bible says, And Ornan said unto David, Take it to thee, and let my lord the king do that which is good in his eyes. Lo, I give thee the oxen also for burnt offerings, and the threshing instruments for wood, and the wheat for the meat offering I give it all. And king David said to Ornan, Nay, but I will verily buy it for the full price, for I will not take that which is thine for the Lord, nor offer burnt offerings without cost. So David gave to Ornan for the place six hundred shekels of gold by weight. And David built there an altar unto the Lord, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings, and called upon the Lord, and he answered him from heaven by fire upon the altar of burnt offering. Thank you for standing, and I'll ask the Lord to help us now as we preach. Father, thank you, Lord, for this blessed Word of God. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to strengthen us, Lord, in body. Lord, strengthen us in spirit. Lord, and I pray, God, for your direction. God, speak through me tonight, I pray. Lord, and I pray, God, for every ear and every heart under the sound of my voice. Lord, I pray, God, that you would please, Lord, speak to our hearts tonight. Lord, and help us to see. Lord, you never said that serving you would be easy. 
You never said we would serve you without falling. God, but you did say, Lord, that we would never be alone. Lord, you promised us, God, if we'd be obedient. Dear God, you would bless us and we would hear from heaven. Lord, we ask you tonight to please, Lord, speak to us, Lord, and help us, dear God, to be more obedient to you and to be willing vessels, Lord, in the army of God. Lord, we love you with all of our hearts. Save the sinner and stir the saints, for it's in Jesus' name we humbly pray and for his sake. Amen. And amen. Tonight, I want to give you a little backstory. Israel has just come through many mighty victories. They have defeated enemy after enemy after enemy, and uh, they have defeated new. Ki- they have defeated new kings. They've defeated giants, and they have slain thousands of their enemies. And after seeing all these many victories, Satan realizes that he is threatened. And church, I want you to understand that because of that, Satan tempts King David. You see, as long as we are in our court, Satan is not bothered. And Satan will not go on the offensive. Satan is fine as long as we're not upsetting his apple cart. Amen? However, where God wants us to be and where David was and where David was continually attacking was Satan's camp. Amen. And so uh, Satan got aggravated and he got bothered. And so uh, he entered into, when David entered into his territory, the Bible says in 1 Chronicles 21 1, and Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Satan purposed in his heart to trip up David. Wouldn't it be nice to know that God, that Satan saw us as such a threat and as such a hindrance to his goal that he saw it necessary to try and trip you and me up. Amen. I don't know about you, but I like making the devil mad. If I ain't making the devil mad, I ain't doing my job. Amen. If I'm not upsetting the devil, then we're not doing our job. So you see, David had beaten all the odds because God was with him. However, the Bible says that David orders something that David knew better than to do. David ordered a census. You say, what is a census? A census is a numbering, a counting of how many people were in his army. You see, David began to be concerned because he believed the lies of the devil. And he began to be threatened and he said, I want you to go and number the army. You say, why did he want that done? He wanted to know what his odds were. Can I tell you tonight that God was displeased with David's decision because when we're with God, our odds are always in his favor. Amen. Amen. But is when we get out of the will of God and when we start worrying and start taking a back seat and, and start, uh, if I can say it this way, start becoming spineless, then my friend, we as the God's children will do stupid things and make stupid mistakes that will cost us in the long run. Amen. Romans 8.31 says, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? David didn't need to number the army. He said, if God be for us, who can be against us? But David doubted and he listened to the devil. And when he did, when he did, God sent judgment. And my friend, therefore God's anger was waxed hot against David. You say, but preacher, surely God is merciful. God is understanding. David made a slip, yes. But let me tell you, church, sin always comes with a punishment. Sin always comes with repercussions. And David was no exception. David was judged. David chooses. that, And so God gives David three choices. He gives him three choices and David chooses the least of the choices. He said, God, I choose that you send a pestilence in our land and that the people would suffer because of that. Now, my friend, because of this, thousands of men died and David prayed to stay the hand of God. When your friends and your family and your your co-workers and everybody that you know starts to die, my friend, you can make it, you can make it, uh, you can bank on it that it's going to bother you. Amen. 
I believe, I believe that it ought to bother us now that our co-workers and our friends and family are dying and going to hell and we need to do something about it. Amen. David was bothered. And so he went to God. And so David went to Aranal, as it is pronounced. David is at the threshing floor of Aranal, as pronounced in 2 Samuel, to meet with God and repent. And this is where we, uh, this is where God would, this is where we read our text tonight. And I want to preach on this thought with the help of God. It's gonna cost you. It's gonna cost you. Church, have you ever stopped and considered that serving God is going to cost you something? It is. Serving God is going to cost you something. And I'm not going to get into it right now because I'll get ahead of myself, but God's judgment is underway and people are dying all around and David is the cause. And David said it's time to do something and David did three things tonight with the help of God. I want to give you those three things. First thing I want you to see is the reason for the altar. What did David do? David didn't run to his neighbor and say, what do you think I should do? David didn't run to a king beside the, in a country beside of him and say, what do you think I should do? David didn't run to his family and say, what do you think I should do? However, David ran to the altar and ran to a place of repentance and ran to a place of, of forgiveness and asked God for help. Why in the world? Can we not learn from this and be obedient and say, God, we are in a mess. God, I've messed up. God, I've done wrong. And get on our knees and say, God, we're sorry. Let me tell you, God is faithful to forgive us of our sins if we will come to Him and trust Him. Amen. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Church, I believe that in this day and hour, Christians do not believe that like we say we do because God has a remedy for whatever's wrong in your life. The altar is the answer. I preached a message a few years ago, I believe it was, on church, meet the altar. You know, one of the most forsaken places in the church, it's not the baptistry, it's not the pew, it certainly ain't the dinner table, but my friend, it is the altar where we get on our knees and say, God, I'm sorry, God, please help me. We're ashamed. The altar is a place to meet with God. It is a place of confession Without sin, there would be no reason for the altar. But because of sin, you and I cannot do without it. Church, the altar is a place that God not only wants us to go, but He expects us to go. David didn't see fire fall from heaven when he was walking to the altar. He saw fire fall from heaven when he knelt down at the altar. Amen. I wonder myself how many, how long, how many times... Have I passed up the opportunity to go to the altar when I should have knelt my knee and said, God, I'm a wretched sinner and I need you. I need you. I can't make it without you. Without the altar, sin will continue to kill and to destroy. But the altar is where sin is eradicated from our lives and from our souls. You know what's amazing to me? You came to the altar when you needed to be saved. You knelt down before Jesus when you needed to be saved. And my friend, there are many people that take the longest time and take, spend so many hours and so many years and so many, uh, many people have never been to an altar and haven't been to an altar in decades. And you say, preacher, well, what's wrong with that? Maybe their life is all right. Let me tell you, I ain't never met a Christian that lived so good that they didn't have to go to the altar. Let me tell you something. If Jesus went into the Garden of Gethsemane and knelt and sweat became, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground, and he thought there was a reason to get on his knees and talk to his Father, I tell you, you and I have got more of a reason tonight to get on our knees, go back, and I'm going to give you some homework tonight, go back and look how many times Jesus went off by himself 
how many times the Son of God went off by himself and said, God, I need you. God, this flesh that I'm wrapped in, it's hard, it's rough, and I know why I'm here, and I ain't looking to get out. Lord God, ain't you glad he didn't look for a way out? Amen. Because he didn't have to look. He was the way out. Amen. But he, he never looked for a way out. He never, he never give up. But he went to his Father, and he found grace. Amen. You say, preacher, he didn't find grace. He was grace. I'm glad you recognize that. Amen. Amen. My friend, he, if Jesus needed it, if Jesus wanted it, if Jesus desired it, you and I should have that same desire to be on our knees before God. My friend, when we get to heaven, you might as well go ahead and practice now because the altar, there's going to be a lot of time spent around, bowed down before the King of kings and Lord of lords. I got a feeling when we get to heaven, we might spend more time on our face than we do on our feet. Amen. I tell you, he's worthy tonight to bow down before. The reason for the altar, David had sinned. And David come to repent. And the altar, if we don't get there, sin will continue. But the altar is where sin is dealt with. All of us here tonight, we know what it's like to suffer because of sin. We do. Anybody here has ever lost on your way to hell? You better raise your hand. Every one of you was. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all know what it's like. But my friend, if you're saved tonight, you ought to remember what it's like to be around the altar and for God to forgive you of your sins. Number two, we don't only see the reason for the altar, but I want you to see the rejection of the allowance. Now here is what I really want to get to. Because when David gets to Aaron's house, Aaron meets the king and like any good servant would do, Aaron tells him, he says, King, and he greets him and says, What are you doing here at my house? I'm a nobody. And he says, I'm here because I'm going to... Oh, I ain't got time to give you this, and it ain't really in the message. But if you'll go back home and read it one more time, you'll see that the reason that David went to Aaron's house was because that was the last place that he seen the angel of the Lord. You say, Preacher, I've drifted far away from God. What do I do? You go back to the last place where you saw God, and you stay there till you meet Him. Amen. Oh, David said, I want to go. i got to go to Aaron's house. And he went there, and Aaron met him and said, David, why are you here he said I come here to meet with God I've got a I've got to build an altar and a sacrifice and he said here take it all take it all he said take the threshing floor he said take the, this is this man's livelihood Lord there's a message just in that I ain't preaching it tonight but I, I, I will one day my friend he said I give my livelihood this is my job this is who I am he said but I give who I am to the king and he said take it all he said here he said it's yours use it as you will and David makes a statement he says in 2 Samuel 24 verse 24 the king said unto Aaron all nay but I will surely buy it of thee at a price Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which doth cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor. He bought the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. And David would not bring nothing to God that did not cost him something. Church, if we are ever going to get closer to God, if we are going to get souls out of sin's danger, if we're going to make a difference, it's going to cost us something. Amen. David said, I refuse. I refuse to come to God with something that didn't cost me nothing. I wonder how many times we've tried to serve God, but we wasn't worthy, we wasn't willing to get out of our comfort zone. Amen. How many times we were we said, Well, we'd like to serve God, but I want to do it this way. God didn't say do it that way. He said do it the other way way. You saw, I'm going to tell you something. I was 16 years old. My friend, God was calling me to preach. I said, God, there ain't no way. I'm too young. I'm too dumb. I'm too ugly. I said, God, there ain't nobody going to listen to this man. I said, God, you might as well pick somebody else. My friend, God was changing my heart and changing my plans. I said, God, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll be faithful to church. I'll serve on the deacon board. I'll 
go soul winning. I'll do whatever you want me to do. But God, I cannot preach. You know what? I was right in everything I said. My friend, God put me on a deacon board. God put me in church every time my doors was open. And my friend, God, I was right. I can't preach. But God Almighty is the one that does the work. Amen. He just wants a willing vessel. And it cost me a lot in my life. But I tell you, every, every rich I've gained, every bit of riches I've gained by serving God is greater than anything I had before. Paul said, when they asked Paul, he said, I've suffered shipwreck. He said, I've lost everything I had. He said, my heritage was to be a, was to be a priest and to be high up in the Jewish church, in the synagogue. He said, I lost all that. I lost every bit of notoriety I had. I've not used a stitch of what I learned in college. Paul said, I ain't done that. He said, but, he said, I want you to know, I count all things but dung, that I might win Christ. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's going to cost you something. Oh, David. And I'm not going to take anything that don't cost me nothing to the Lord. Let me tell you something. Coming to the Lord tonight, it'll cost you your pride. Yep, sure will. It'll cost you your pride. It'll cost you your arrogance. It'll cost you your feeling like you're better than somebody else. Let me tell you, it takes, it takes a sense of humility to bow down before God. But I tell you, I ain't bowing down before Biden. I ain't bowing down before Trump. I ain't kissing the Pope's ring. Amen. But I tell you tonight, I ain't got a single problem in the world with bowing down to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Throw pride out the window. Throw, praise God, throw my reputation out the window. Praise God, he's worthy to call whatever it costs. Amen. Romans 12, 1. The Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable, which is our, which is your reasonable service. God doesn't want your things and your money and your family alone, but the very first thing that God wants is us. He wants us. He wants me. You say, oh, preacher, you're mistaken. God wants my money. Let me tell you something. If you ain't give yourself to God, you might as well keep your money. Because without giving yourself to God, you can't be a cheerful giver. Because ain't nobody wants to let go of what they work hard for. But when you give God you, and you say, God, whatever you want, I want. Guess what? You'll, when the offering plate comes, you'll sing Amazing Grace louder than you ever have before. I'll tell you, in my lifetime, which has only happened one time, and I know what some of y'all are thinking, hey, you're young. Yeah, I am. I thank God for it. Amen. Lord, if I was as... Never mind. God help me right there. But my goodness, I, I know I'm young, and but in my lifetime... In my ministry, 16 years, I've only seen one time that when the offering plate was being passed, people were shouting. I'm going to tell you, I went into that service thinking, boy, this is going to be good. The preacher that was preaching, oh man, I was excited. The singers that was singing, I was ready. I was tanked up. But God caught me off guard when he swept through that place. When the ushers were walking down the aisle. You say, what got it all started? There was one little old man in the front. Didn't look like he had a dime to his name. But when the offering plate passed him, he put what he had in the plate. And son, as they were singing, I don't even remember what they were singing. But he come unglued. I said, I wonder could it be that that man's just happy that he had what little bit to give and praising God he was glad he was saved and not going to hell anymore. Oh church, let me tell you it don't matter if the offering plate's being passed it don't matter what's going on if you're, not, if you're saved tonight and you're not going to hell I tell you, praise God for it. Amen. But David rejected the allowance 
It will cost you your pride. It will cost you your popularity. Yes, it will cost you your time. It will cost you some friendships. Let me tell you something. I had friends in high school. Buddy, let me tell you, I had, some, I had, a, bunch of, had a few friends in high school. And buddy, I tell you, I, I loved them. Man, I tell you, they was the, they was the best dope-smoking crowd you've ever seen in your life. They was. Y'all okay? Some of y'all, I say that, and some of y'all look like you about death warmed over. Amen. I don't know what's going on, but anyways, I, I mean, there's the best dope smokers around. There's the best drunks around, funniest. I mean, there's just a good group there. My friend, I surrendered to the call to preach over the summer. Come back in my junior year of high school. And buddy, I tell you, I told them I surrendered to preach. And I was giving my life to Jesus, all of it, every bit of it. Son, you talk about losing friends. I believe they run all over each other trying to get out of there. You say, preacher, why did they leave? i tell you why they left. Because it's uncomfortable when darkness gets around light. Though I was saved, I was hanging around a dark crowd and my light was hid under my bed and under a bushel. But praise God, God burned my bushel. <laughs> he burned my bushel and I chunked my bed out in the yard. And praise God, I tell you tonight that it cost me some friends, but I gained the greatest friend I've ever had. Amen. I tell you, he's been with me. Lord of God, Miss David, Maybe Miss Megan, he's walked with me through the lowest of valleys. He's been with me on the mountaintop. He's walked through the fire with me. I'll tell you, if you don't know him, he's the greatest friend you'll ever have. Hey, Amen. Number three, and I'm done. The revealing of the answer. In the text, you'll notice the Bible says, in 1 Chronicles chapter number 21, the Bible says that God rain fire down from heaven. But I want you to notice that the Bible says that after David made the altar and prepared the sacrifice, that God answered with fire from heaven. You see, that's what we're missing in this day. Some of y'all are okay with people going to the altar. Some of you's even prepared your sacrifice. Some of you have come to the altar and you left your sacrifice in the seat. Some of you brought your sacrifice with you and you never brought it to the altar. You stayed with it. You know how many times I've come to church and I said, God, I really want help. I really want help. But I held on to my bundle of sticks. And I held on to my little lamb. And I said, God, I just can't part with it. I can't let it go. You know how many times I went home empty, Brother Darrell. And I didn't feel no fire coming down from heaven. I didn't see God doing nothing. God didn't help me. God didn't bless me. But when I came to the altar and when I let go of my sacrifice and I said, God, here I am. Oh, my goodness. Do you know what the prophet Isaiah said? The Bible says that God was searching through the earth for a man. He was. He said, is there a man? Is there anybody that'll stand and proclaim my word? You know what Isaiah spoke up and said? As a matter of fact, Brother Darrell, I ain't for sure he wasn't the only one. He's the only one we heard about. Isaiah said, Here am I, Lord. Send me. You know what God's looking for in Chapel Hill Baptist Church? He's looking for some people that'll let go of the sacrifice and bow down on their face and say, Here am I, Lord. Use me. Amen. The reason we spend more time getting out of the mess than we do reveling in the blessings of God is we, because we spend so much time trying to repair a broken fellowship with God than we do trying to repair a broken relationship with God. Fellowship with God. Let me tell you something. David had a relationship with God. You say, how do you know that? Because he didn't mess around. He went right to the heart of the problem. Here's what we do. Well, let's see if this will fix it. Well, I watched Dr. Phil today, and we'll see if that'll fix it. Maybe Joel Osteen's got an answer. I can promise you, you're barking up a wrong tree there. Especially if you turn on Joyce Meyer. Lord God, have mercy. Help us. Well, maybe I'll go to the doctor. Maybe he's got a pill that'll fix me. No. We're trying to fix a fellowship problem. When it's more than a fellowship problem, it's a relationship problem. You see, David and God had a relationship. And when they got, David went to the heart of the problem, 
them. God said to God took his hand off of Israel and the pestilence went away. And David said, God, pour it all on me. It's my fault to begin with. Church, you and I have got to quit messing around and playing games. It's not, it's not a game to God and it shouldn't be a game to us. It's a relationship problem. My goodness, you say, preacher, but I'm his child. Yeah, but even daddies have to whip disobedient children. I remember growing up, I'm going to hurry up with this. I remember growing up, my daddy, my daddy was, had anger issues. And let me tell you, they, my brother's got them, my sister's got them. God helped me with mine. You say, how do you know that? Because they, they ain't been a hole in my wall since I got married. Praise the Lord. You say, what's a hole in the wall mean? I don't know. You want me to call my brother and ask him? Come home one day and there's a hole in the wall in the kitchen. My daddy said, what in the world is this hole in the wall? He said, it was your daughter or the wall. And I picked the wall. He said, good choice. You say, what else did he say? Not much because he had done it too. <laughs> Anyways, but God... My, my daddy growing up, and I remember my daddy telling me, go to my room. And I'd go to my room, and I was already squalling like a, I mean, son, I was squalling like an Indian. Son, you'd have thought Cherokee done moved down the mountain, son. It was, it was bad. You say, why? Because I knew when my daddy told me I was in trouble, he meant it. Don't tell your kid they're in trouble unless you mean it. Amen. And my daddy would tell me to go to my room, and I got a little older, and he explained to me. He said, son, you know why I tell you to go to your room? I said, why? He said, because I love you. He said, and I know me. He said, if I act on my emotion and right then, he said, I might hurt you. He said, but I've got to get to the state where when I whoop you, I at least leave stripes and whelps and I don't leave bruises and cuts. I said, dear Lord, Daddy, I'm so glad you sent me to my room because I got the whelps. I got the handprints across the face. I, I tell you, I got a lot of it, but I'm here to tell you, I'm thankful that my daddy did at least care about how I acted. I may not agree on how everything, how he done it. And I, may not, I may not want to be that way, and I thank God hopefully I won't be. But I'm here to tell you. By the way, let me just go ahead and pass this off. If you don't believe me, you can ask Stephen. Me and Stephen, by the way, uh, never mind, I won't get into that. Me and Stephen, we was working on the church, and we was doing some different things. Son, he's a joker. Y'all know that if you spend any time around him. And... Uh, I warned him. I always warn all my friends. I ain't warned no church members, so I'm going to go ahead and warn you. I was working at a place one time, and a man raised his hand. He was far from me. Raised his hand and was hollering at me. I said, I'm going to tell you something. I said, you better back up. All I had was an a air-compressed paint sprayer. Boy, let me tell you, that was bad for him to do that. I've heard that primer in the eyes is painful. And son, I warned him. I went in his office. I said, son, don't raise your hand to me. I told Stephen, you can ask him after church. I said, you can joke, you can aggravate me. Don't ever pretend like you're going to hit me in the face. I don't care how big you are, I'll still slap you. Hey, man, I will. You say, preacher, that ain't much of a preacher. Bible says not to be brawler. Well, don't raise your hand to me. We don't have to worry about it. Hey, Amen. Everybody good? Hey, Amen. You pour gas on a fire while you're standing close to it? Amen. Well, same principle there. All right. By the way, that's a good rule of thumb to go about with everybody you know. Amen. But anyways, my daddy, he, he, he warned, he, he, he taught me. He, he whooped me because he loved me. He whooped David because he loved him, and David knew that. He said, God, go ahead and give me my whooping. I'm ready. He's got on his knees and he laid down his sacrifice, the one that cost him something. And he said, God, here I am. Do what do it, do unto me as you will. And God rained fire down from heaven. You know what I want to see in my life every single day? I want to see the fire fall from heaven. Amen. I want to see God rain down and bless us. But we must, we must, we must be willing to let go of the sacrifice. All of this that happened in our text was a result of sin and the way that David dealt with it. Sin cost us, but worship and true holiness and fellowship with God is going to cost us. You know, I, there's a song somebody wrote. As a Christian, we've missed out on some things. I got saved when I was nine years old. I missed out. I grew up in a Christian home. 
I've missed out on a lot of things. I missed out on a broken home. I missed out on a drunkard's lifestyle. I missed out on a drug addict's lifestyle. Friend, let me tell you what I've missed out on and what this, this Christian life has cost me is far better than anything this world has to offer. I'd rather be right here tonight on a Sunday evening than anywhere else in this world that I can think of. You say, what about Disney World? I wouldn't give you a plug nickel for Disney World. You say, well, ain't there some place you'd rather be? Sometimes ain't no place I'd rather be than right here. Because let me tell you, church, everything I've lost, this place right here reminds me of everything I've gained. Every time I get around God's people and start worshiping Jesus, I'm telling you, He's worthy and He's worth it. We saw this verse Wednesday night, Second Chronicles 7.14, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Church, let me tell you, I don't know about you, but I want God to reveal Himself to me, but He will not do it unless what I bring to Him costs me something. What a joy it is to have a God that loves us enough that even when we make the dumbest mistakes, He is willing, willing to forgive us and restore that relationship and fellowship that we've lost. I want you to think. I, I, I promise I'm going to pray. I want you to think how many times, how many times you have walked away from God and God should have kicked you to the curb. How many times you've come back and God welcomed you with open arms? How many times have you fallen and made a mistake and you came back? You was punished. You cried. But when you came back to Jesus and said, God, my pride, I give it to you. I don't care what it, I don't care what, what it costs me, God. I just want to be back in with you. And every single time God brings us, back, brings us right back into his fold. What a blessing. What a blessing. Let's pray tonight. Father, thank you, Lord, for this time. Lord, I pray, God, is there is a congregation of people here, Lord, that...